fun fawr am y gwahoddiad a diolch hefyd am y croeso cynnes. It's a pleasure to be speaking at an event organised by the Wales Governance Centre and I'd like to begin today by paying tribute to the work of the centre. I'm sure that the partnership that has been developed alongside Cardiff University and our National Assembly will be of great benefit to our growing democracy. So I wish you luck and I hope that you flourish here in your new home here in the Pierhead building. And I want to say thank you as well for organising this series of talks from the party leaders which has given me this opportunity today to outline Plaid Cymru's thinking uh, on this day which marks my first year anniversary as the leader of Plaid Cymru, the Party of Wales. When I was elected as leader of my party, I made it clear that I wanted to be judged on one issue and one issue only, and that is the economy. And the economy, the creation of jobs, remains and will remain my steadfast focus as we head towards the next assembly elections in 2016 and as I and my party develop the programme of government that we will put into action as the next government of Wales. The people of Wales deserve nothing less than a government that does everything in its power to enable our nation to become as successful and as prosperous as I know we can be. That is why it's so disappointing to see the lacklustre Labour Welsh Government repeatedly failing to stand up for the people that it claims to represent. During my first year as leader, Plaid Cymru has successfully negotiated a budget deal that would have seen thousands of apprenticeship places being created across Wales, helping not only our young people, but also our small businesses too. We negotiated a £10 million in capital investment for Science Park in the northwest of Wales, which will create jobs in the short term and equip our young people with much needed knowledge and skills for the future. And it's good to be able to point to our work in pushing the Welsh Government to reverse its disastrous plans to pass on cuts to council tax benefits to those who are the worst off in our communities. Plaid Cymru fundamentally disagrees with the course of action being taken by the UK government. Far from making things better, the policies being pursued by the UK government are actually making the problems in the Welsh economy worse. Plan A for austerity is disastrous for Wales. The people of Wales did not vote for it. Most people here support parties which reject it, or at least say that they reject it. But rejecting austerity is not enough. We must also reject the mantra that there is no alternative. For Wales, there has to be an alternative. Plaid Cymru is building a programme that will offer that alternative. When I became the leader of Plaid Cymru a year ago, I announced the establishment of a commission to put together a plan, a set of policies, to reverse the decades of our economic decline. That commission, headed by Irvin Aquilim and Adam Price, has so far identified five key areas for strategic interventions in the Welsh economy. And I'll be using this speech today to outline those areas identified and the Commission will, in due course, be publishing further details. If Wales is to be successful, if we are really open for business, then we need to be a connected nation. The late Professor Phil Williams often talked about the time when Wales was most connected, both internally and with the wider world. That was a century ago, in the years leading up to the First World War. In those days, it was possible to travel from virtually any point in Wales to any town of significant size using the railways. As far as the wider world was concerned, our major ports were connected with all points on the globe, with stocks of Welsh coal piled high in places as far apart as the east coast of South America, 
Cape Town, China and Japan. That was the high point of Welsh connectivity and it was no coincidence either that this was the most prosperous period in our nation's history. Since then, Welsh communications have retreated to such an extent that it is probably the case that we are now the most disconnected part of the British Isles. As is all too often the case, Wales suffered disproportionately from the beaching rail cuts in the 1960s. The consequences of this were severe and are still felt today, and they will continue to be felt long into the future. With two relatively minor closures, the lines between Bwrheli and Carnarvon, and between Aberystwyth and Carmarthen, the one remaining north-south link within Wales was destroyed. We also have significant issues with our figure of eight road network. In any other European country, this network would have been built to dual carriageway standard throughout. Yet in Wales, the only part of the network where this is the case is along the east-west sections. It's essential that the railway portfolio, including railway infrastructure, is devolved in full as an urgent priority. <coughs> The National Assembly needs full control over the All Wales Rail franchise, including a borderline from Wrexham through Shrewsbury to Hereford and Abergavenny. This would enable the establishment of a not-for-profit cooperative rail company, whose task would be to begin the re-establishment of an integrated Welsh rail network. Devolving rail infrastructure would trigger an immediate balance consequential of around £150 million pounds per year. Applied Cymru government would be planning now to capitalise on the electrification of the Great <coughs> Western Line to Swansea. That would help to create a metro for South East Wales, a comprehensive two-level-go public rail system linking all of the major settlements of the 1.4 million people living in and around our capital city. In order to make this happen, the government needs to set up a passenger transport executive for South East Wales which should have land acquisition powers. And they could and should get on with this straight away. A public transport executive for the Swansea Bay region could also be established to develop a similar light rail <coughs> network in that area. Plaid Cymru wants to see the north-south line between Mangor and Cardiff electrified to provide a regular service as close to three hours as is possible. We also want to see the electrification of the Great Western Main Line extended to Fishguard. Further investment can be made to improve our figure of eight road network. It can be widened to provide at least two lanes and a hard shoulder on, the, on either side to enable faster moving and traffic passing opportunities. This would improve safety and enable better bus and coach services, improving overall public transport. We should not ignore the swell of economic potential in the waters of Port Talbot. Port Talbot is one of only a few harbours in the UK capable of handling the new generation of cape sized vessels. It is located within easy reach of the open sea, has direct mainline rail access and lies adjacent to the M4. The port comprises the tidal harbour, which handles cape-sized bulk vessels, and the docks, which can accommodate smaller, heavy lift, project and general cargo vessels. This is an asset that has significant development opportunities available for the construction of additional berths and cargo handling facilities, and the Welsh Government should be looking to make the most of that asset with the port's owners, ABP. Being a better connected nation also means improving our IT network. It means high-speed broadband connections and 4G for all, not just the lucky few. Wales deserves to be a country where people have the opportunities to do business and to do business well. Long-term investment is needed to reverse the decline that has led us to where we are now. But in the meantime, people in Wales cannot wait. Action is needed now if we are to get through this recession without losing another generation to a future devoid of jobs, skills and hope. 
You may have heard me beating the drum for local uh, procurement and talking about the importance of buying locally. Well, it's a drum worth beating again. We have to relocalise our business activities. Welsh economist Carol Williams has advocated local strategies to plug linkages from the Welsh economy. At a systematic level, this involves identifying opportunities for local production of goods or provision of services that are currently provided by companies based outside of Wales. Given the overwhelming dominance of the public sector in the Welsh economy, public procurement is an obvious place to begin. Every year, the National Assembly passes a budget that represents just over a third of Wales' total GVA. And a third of that, again, constitutes the purchasing of goods and services by suppliers in the private and social enterprise sectors in which over 70% of Welsh employees work. <coughs> the National Assembly, representing the people of this country, is directly and indirectly the biggest customer in the land, whose purchasing decisions have huge ripple effects. Decisions as to where goods and services are procured have the potential to reinvigorate the Welsh economy. This is an area on which I have been campaigning for some time, and Plykenby has already proposed a number of shifts in government policy in this area. We want to see the introduction of legislation, which would make it a statutory duty for public bodies to adhere to Welsh government policy on procurement. The McClelland report highlighted resistance in some parts of the public sector to a more progressive approach. It's time that we looked beyond the old-fashioned lowest cost denominator to a more progressive approach that aims to lock more public expenditure back into the Welsh economy. We want to see a duty placed on public bodies to incorporate community benefit clauses in contracts to ensure that local firms are on a level playing field when they apply for contracts. And all of this can be done without infringing EU law. Like Henry has a track record in government on this, with Leighan and Jones as Transport Minister insisting on such clauses for the construction of the Parthman Dock and the Church Village bypasses. We need to remove the barriers that currently prevent or discourage smaller local businesses from applying for public contracts. A single simplified prefab qualification system should be introduced across Wales with limits on the level of turnover required and a duty to consider the impact of the tendering process on micro, small and medium sized firms and the third sector. Jill Evans, Plaid Cymru's MEP, has been pushing for Welsh businesses on a European level to loosen EU restrictions on regional discrimination to make it easier for the Welsh and Scottish, Northern Irish and English governments to support local firms. <coughs> Applied Cymru government would aim to increase the rate of domestic procurement to 75%. According to Value Wales's formula, this would create 46,000 jobs in the private sector. An unemployment boost of this kind would cut the unemployment rate by 40% and boost our GVA growth by 0.5% a year. And we shouldn't stop in the public sector. This is an area where we can all play an active part. We can all work together to lift Wales up because the same process can be applied to household consumption of private goods and services. We can all use our own purchasing power. Plaid Cymru wants to see a systematic and detailed analysis of the lost value of these leakages to the Welsh economy represent, with a view to identifying specific opportunities for new Welsh entrants to the supply chains of retailers and other service providers. We need to look at what we can do in Wales, and then we just need to get on and do it. For example, this could mean a revival of the market gardening of tomatoes, which my predecessor, Gwynfor Evans, produced successfully over 50 years ago. But now we import 80% of our tomatoes. That makes no sense. And for anyone who's ever grown their own tomatoes, you will know that those imports fall considerably below the quality that you can expect from your own grown version. 
Our Make It Welsh initiative will issue calls for the business plans in relation to these key market gaps with challenge funding provided to the women entrepreneurs and social enterprises. Just like Hyatt Jeans, who are making jeans again in uh, Abitavi, Cardigan, uh, who I visited last year. If, if you want to visit an innovative Welsh company, I would recommend you check out Hyatt. They're very, very good. It's not controversial to say that a country's economy should be based around its strengths. And there can be no doubt that an economy based on population through individual taxes and employment does not suit a country of just 3 million people. Our relatively low population, however, does offer distinct advantages. Wales is well established as a net exporter of the energy it generates, which differentiates us from England, which imports electricity from Wales, Scotland and continental Europe. The so-called energy gap that's often cited in support of carbon-based energy projects is England's energy gap, not Wales's. However, our electricity exports have been consistently falling since peaking in 2008. During 2011, the amount of electricity we exported was 13% of the total electricity generated. Previous exports accounted for between 18 and 30%. This fall is primarily due to the decline in generation from gas. The percentage of electricity generated in Wales from renewable sources, however, has consistently been growing since 2004 and is currently at its peak, but still too low, in my view, at 7.9%. The Welsh Government's own target is for Wales to produce double its electricity use from renewable energy sources by 2025, and Plaid is fully supportive of that goal. But achieving that target requires significant expansion of Wales' renewable sector, which in turn offers significant potential to energy companies with an interest in renewable energy. Plaid Cymru believes that our resources should ultimately be used for the benefit of the people of Wales. <laughs> Giving away our resources for the benefit of private companies and shareholders goes <coughs> fundamentally against that <coughs> principle. Applied Cymru Government would therefore establish a state-owned national energy agency. This would use our natural resources for the benefit of the people of Wales. There are a number of examples of state-owned energy companies, the most well-known being EDF, in which the French Government owns an 85% stake. But Sweden, Norway and Ireland off offer examples of state-owned energy companies as well in Vattenfall, Startcraft and ESE, respectively. An arms-length Welsh National Energy Agency would be able to invest in research and development of new projects and generate electricity first and foremost for the people here in Wales, but it could also contribute to the international grid. I'm sure that much of the resistance that we currently see with the renewable energy generation projects could be overcome if the economic and financial benefits could be seen and held by the communities that are affected themselves, rather than by the shareholders of the big energy companies. Wales needs to harness the potential that renewable energy offers, the potential for a, new, a green new deal for the Welsh economy. Job creation in renewable energy, energy conservation, localising the food chain as outlined in the green print are all a must. Ensuring that high quality engineering, business and cooperative skills are available in all communities, especially to the next generation who face high unemployment levels, is also a must if we are to make that happen. <clears throat> Through actions like these we can kickstart the economy in a way that will build the new sustainable resilient wheels. We want to see the Chancellor introduce in his budget next week a 5% VAT rate for housing improvement work which would help stimulate demand which is what the construction industry urgently needs. Such a move would help Wales improve not just the quality of our housing stock but also the energy efficiency of our homes. That VAT rate would be cost neutral 
would create jobs in our communities, would help our families combat climate change as well as cutting down their bills. It would provide a boost to our economy that we desperately need. Last year, the green sector was one of the major growth areas across the UK. It saw a 4% growth. Green business was responsible for an estimated third of UK growth in 2011-12. We in Wales must benefit from this. <clears throat> green in our economy and green in our country makes perfect sense with all the natural resources that we have at our disposal. And that is why I announced in my conference speech a fortnight ago that we wanted a green skills construction college, concentrating on the skills needed for our second industrial revolution. We want a Wales that is forward-looking in skills, in jobs, in economic growth, confident and hopeful for the future. It's almost become a cliche to refer to the small businesses as the backbone of the Welsh economy. It's true, of course, but the fact that it's become a cliche is the consequence of the inability of the government to act to secure their future. Our own research in Plank Cymru, along with research from civic society, clearly shows that access to finance is a barrier to growth for many small businesses in Wales. And the lack of such finance is hindering our economic growth and our employment. This is not purely a consequence of the crash of 2008. 92% of the banking sector is made up of five banks. In the case of Germany, 13% of the banking sector is made up of large banks. The monopolisation <coughs> of the banking sector has led to a culture of greed and speculation based on ordinary people's deposits, and that is what eventually led to the crash of 2008. That is why the Party of Wales has called for investment and retail bank banking to be split. Never again should the public's money be gambled away. Splitting the banks alone will not make finance more accessible to small businesses. The need for banks to repair balance sheets means that they've been reducing their lending. This is acting as a drag on the economy, a drag on our small businesses, a drag on our economy's backbone. This, of course, is not exclusively a Welsh issue. The last Labour UK government established the Rowlands Commission back in 2009 to look at this question. The current Conservative Chancellor established the Breeder Review, which reported in 2012. And now the Labour government here in Wales has established its own review. What we need from government is not review after review after review. <coughs> what we need and what we want to see now is action. Yeah, yeah. A Welsh financial system that will enable our small businesses to thrive and f flourish. A few weeks ago, I, looked, I, I announced that Plaid Cymru would uh, establish an arm's length, publicly owned Bank of Wales along uh, along the lines of the regional banks in Germany to invest in small businesses at competitive rates. The proposal, backed by leading economists, and now it seems as well by the leader of the Labour Party, would create a, a bank with an independent board of directors approved by the FSA. It would lend to SMEs across Wales from its deposit base of wholesale markets, bonds and private sales. It would be a business investment bank run in the interest of Welsh businesses by and for Welsh people. There can be little doubt that many of Wales's current economic difficulties stem from the dismantling of the UK regional policy from the early 1980s onwards. This combined with the embracing of a devil-may-care, laissez-faire attitude to the concentration of economic activity in a single sector in a single city, the city of London. While blaming London for all of our economic woes is all too often an easy option, Allowing us to ignore our own responsibilities under devolution, there can be the doubt, given the still truncated nature of our devolution settlement, that the impact of UK policies will play a critical role in ensuring the success 
or failure of our overall plan. While the devolution settlement stands as it is, the UK government has an important role to play. And there are several actions that Pike and Reed will demand the UK government takes in order to recalibrate this historic imbalance. The UK government should support a 2030 bid for a Wales World Expo, the first time it will have returned to mainland Britain since the Victorian era, to mark 200 years since the Industrial Revolution. The UK government should barnetise research councils so that Wales receives its fair share of funding. We will look at, the, at devolving the administration of the welfare system, including the new universal credit, so that the Welsh Government can benefit from savings accrued from successful job creation policies. Powers recommended by the Civil Commission should be transferred as soon as possible. We cannot, we cannot trust the UK Government to deal with people fairly and compassionately, so we must be able to be prepared to do it for ourselves. To create jobs in high need areas, we want to see concerted action taken to increase the Welsh proportion of UK public procurement budgets in underrepresented and disadvantaged areas. I began this speech by reminding you that since my election as leader of Pike Henry, my number one priority has been jobs and the economy. There is a reason why I wanted to make the economy and jobs my focus. Time and time again, people in communities all across Wales have been dealt a severe blow by successive UK governments. The saying is, home is where the heart is. It's what shapes us. Growing up where I grew up in the Rhonda has shaped me personally and politically. I grew up seeing the real, everyday, crushing impact of the economic devastation which has been wrought upon too many communities in Wales time and time again. For far too many of my contemporaries growing up during the 1980s, the possibility of a job could feel like a distant pipe dream. And you can still see the lack of hope that joblessness creates in the boarded up closed shops. Today, that hopelessness still echoes around the floors of abandoned factories and pits. We have to turn that around. Plight Company is here to provide people with that hope. The desire to build hope for communities like mine is what brought me into politics in the first place, and it, what, it's what continues to drive me today. It's the driving force behind my desire to see a Plaid Cymru government in 2016. It's that devastation, that decline, that I am determined to see reversed. We have great potential in this country, and I want to see it unlocked. And that is why I am announcing to you today that it is my intention to seek selection to stand in the next Assembly election as the candidate for the form of their constituency. <laughs> Yeah. 